If your kid understands what the potential dangers are, then they can thrive on the internet. And this is what we ask them to understand. Why, how, and from who they need protection. And a reminder to you that what they need from you is your life experience. When your kid is 15 years old, he's got 15 years of valuable life experience. When you are 30 or 40 or 50, you have that much more. That's what our kids need. Nothing about this. If you're not a computer person, it doesn't matter. Talk to your kid about who they're talking to online. These are the threats. And I start before we go to uh, sexual predators is online predators. An online predator is anybody looking to use that computer to do damage to somebody else, to steal their money, to steal their identity, to, to send that nasty message. That's an online predator and that cuts, uh, covers everybody. Sexual predators, the great white sharks of the internet. I wish there was a better way to explain it other than sometimes there's an evil in this world. And our kids need to understand that sometimes there's just an evil in the world. And that evil is looking for our children online. And we'll talk about it. We'll go through it. Identity thieves. Listen, if you're still young and you're still cool, people know that just by meeting you. You don't need your first name, your last name, and your complete date of birth on your Facebook profile. Lose the year. Lose the year. You are giving your identities away. Lose the year, and your children need to lose the year, too. Identity thieves are rampant on the Internet. Cyberbullying, harassment, stalking, and cyber threats. We're going to understand what these things are and go through them a little bit. And the last part, sexting and sextortion. Sexting is the sending young people, mostly girls, give in to the pressure from their boyfriends who love them today and maybe don't love them tomorrow to take that picture because every guy has a picture of his girlfriend. Wrong. I tell your, your daughters, ladies, he's not worth it. If he is asking you for that picture, he is not worth the time of day. And fellas, you don't have the right. Our kids need to understand they don't have that right. And sextortion is the extortion that goes with the possession of those pictures and what somebody does with it. Your son or daughter doesn't control who sends them a message, but what they do when they get that picture or they get that image is vitally important to their future. Because if they forward it, and depending on the ages involved, child pornography laws are designed to protect our kids. But when an 18-year-old has a picture of a 15-year-old and he forwards it to the world to see, he just became a registered sex offender when he takes a collar for it. So we need to understand, and our kids need to be responsible. First, we've got to start with who's online. And as you're, as you're browsing the internet, and as your children are browsing the internet, understand who's online. And I start with New York's 100 Most Wanted Fugitives. And highlighted in red are the sexual offenders. It doesn't really matter too much. What, are you okay? Yeah, Okay. Hi. It doesn't really matter too much, their names and their faces. <laughs> what I try to point out to kids is the volume. I've been following this for about five years. And at any given time, about half of our most wanted fugitives are sexual offenders. And I ask kids, anybody, when I'm in a school, anybody ever have a conversation with a sexual offender? And no, 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 no. And I ask them, how do you know? If you are mixing it up with strangers online, you are hoping for the best. These are the numbers. Over 715,000 registered sex offenders in the United States. These are the Megan's Law people that have done a crime, got arrested, went to jail, and are being released back into society. State by state, most probation or parole situations forbid them from accessing social networking sites. That's a good thing. We need to take a look at it. In New York State, 31,000. In Westchester County, 495 registered sex offenders. We've told our kids since they were this big, don't talk to strangers. They need to understand it applies online. There's two ways. An online predator. Somebody looking to do harm encounters you or encounters your child directly or indirectly. Directly kind of easy to understand. That's Dateline NBC. Your kid got targeted somehow, some way, and he or she's in a conversation. Or you got targeted somehow, some way, and you're in a conversation. We're instinctive beings. Sometimes trust your instincts. I'm getting a bad vibe from this situation, and I gotta get out of this situation. It's real to safety month. A quick story, 1987, I'm a young police officer in the Bronx, and I respond to a sexual assault in progress. And it's at a house that had an open house earlier that day. And it's at 6.15 p.m., and the open house, I later learned, went from 2 to 6. And the victim that day was about a 35-year-old real estate agent. And she said, Tom, I knew, man. I knew. This thing ended at 6. She was cleaning up. She was putting some signs back in her car. And this guy pulled up. And this guy said, I've been looking at this house for months. Is it over? I want to just come in and see the house. And she said, somehow, somehow I had a bad feeling. I knew. But I wanted to make that sale too. And back in the house we went, and she was a rape victim that day. Devastating, devastating, devastating. You guys are on the front lines of some of this. 
you got to take some initiative. If you got a bad feeling, maybe you can't understand it, maybe you can't articulate it, but trust it. Bring a partner. Bring somebody out with you. If you get a bad feeling, you go in the house, pal, I'll wait out here. Trust your instinct. There's no turning back time after we become a victim. But direct conversation, direct communication is kind of easy to understand. Horrifying when we're in the situation, but easy to understand. Indirect, a little harder to understand. Indirect is what you post and who's looking at the information that you post, be it on Facebook, be it on LinkedIn. You need to control and your kids need to control who's looking at the information that they're giving up. So we'll talk about a little direct contact. Any medium that your kid uses to communicate is viable. Chat rooms are the most notorious. 40% of all sexual solicitations of young people by adult, adults are happening in chat rooms. Is this every kid? No way. But oftentimes kids that lack certain social skills they're not fitting in, they spend their time, they look for friends on chat rooms, okay? Kids that are sad, depressed, or lonely, spend their time on chat rooms. Is that every kid? No way. But if your son or daughter is spending time in a chat room, just talk to them about it. Ask them why. The two most notorious, Chat Roulette and Omegle. A disaster, a predator's paradise. These are Russian roulette type random sites that match your son or daughter up on a webcam with complete strangers. They're as likely to find a naked man from Bangkok, Thailand as they are some kid in the next town or the next country and have a meaningful interaction. It's a complete predator's paradise. I tell kids, this is a line of strangers outside your bedroom window peering in to take a look at your life. If that makes you comfortable, chat roulette away. If that makes you uncomfortable, you need to take some action. It's a predator's paradise full of naked men and women. The first thing that pops up is horny. Yes or no? Horny. That's the first question that pops up almost across the board if you spend any time. There's a video fishing back to a way of determining your son or daughter's location. It's supposed to be completely random. That's how they get location. They're developing chat roulette mapping system and a local roulette to keep it from across the country to right in your neighborhood. Even more scary. Even more scary. They're looking to go from this kind of interaction, a relatively uh, anonymous interaction, to being manipulated into becoming Facebook friends or texting friends. Our kids need to be aware. This is wonderful medium to a certain extent. They need to be aware of what the dangers are. This is kind of what chat roulette looks like. This is the freak that your kid is talking about. This is your child. Look over their shoulder. What can that person, what can that manipulator, what can that con man see that's over your kid's shoulder about where they go to school or where they live? Forget about the straight conversation because they may be working your child, all right? If your child spends time in the chat room, just talk to them. Ask them why. And I ask your kids to ask this question to yourself. Is this where they want to spend their time online? If it is, maybe it's a wonderful chat room because they're set up for the right reasons at times too, but maybe it's not. Indirect contact takes place on social networking sites like Facebook, and it takes place on YouTube, where your son or daughter posts information for other people to see, and they need to pay attention to what they post. There's tons of internet sites. We would be here all day. Listen, I got to tell you, this is an hour and a half presentation, and this young lady said, you're going to be talking to an empty room, my friend. So I looked at about 160 slides on this presentation the other night, and I successfully cut three of them. All right? So we're in trouble. We don't cut any information. We just talk faster. So Jim Harry, Jim is my boss from Clancy Moore, Jim's job is to chop me off at the knees, man, if we go over. But there's tons of sites. I like to explain it this way to kids. Life is full of warning signs. Many of them are very, very, very easy to understand. Danger, high voltage, they see a slippery one wet sign, they choose to run down that hallway, they're going to have six stitches to remind them why they should have followed what the rules were. It's easy to understand. You blow a stop sign, you run a red light, you're going to crash your car. Here was the rule. I broke the rule. I felt some pain right away. Easy to understand, and i got to repair my car. Beware of a tack dog on a gate, on a fence. Your kid goes up to that gate and fence, looks over and says, no, that dog's sleeping, I'm going in. They're going to get bit by a dog. They saw the rule, they broke the rule, now they're bleeding from the ankle and they understand I should have paid attention to what the rules were. The internet comes with rules too. Some things you need to be a certain age, some things you need to be uh, a parental guidance, some things you need authorization to access. It comes. If your kids are not old enough, if your grandchildren, your nieces, your nephews, the young people in your life are not old enough, there's rules that go with the internet as well. And these are some of the rules. Must be at, six, at least 16 for friends to chat roulette or maple. Must be at least 13 for Facebook. Listen, when Johnny is 11 or 12 years old and you as the parent allow them to join Facebook, you're committing a level of fraud. 
It's a level of force, the same level of force that the 45-year-old pervert.